Okay, so nobody's in charge here, so I guess what, what like, uh, as Steve Murphy would say, by unanimous consent, we can open the meeting, right? Sure. Okay. Can we do one, two, three, not it for chair? What? <laughs> can we call one, two, three, not it for chair? <laughs> Chris was the chair. Chris was the chair. He was yeah. the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So the first thing we have to do, so we're going to call the meeting in order at 6.02 like we did last month. Now we have to select a chair. We have to organize the board by selecting a chair, vice chair, and a clerk. I nominate Diana Padisi as chair. I'll second that. Well, since you already <laughs> turned it down, I don't want to put you back on the spot again. So I, once once the school board um once that my term on the school board ends, I, I in another year, maybe a little before that, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I can see how I'd goes. consider it. But uh, I just will try really hard to keep things in order and not let people go on and on. We can help too, Diana, yeah, right? Like we yes, can, you can, can yes, you can too. Yes. Yes. You can too. Well, no, I'm not going to, but <laughs> other select board members can. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're going to have a coffin fit? be the chair, does that mean one of us has to be the clerk? Cause we'll get you a bat. I will still do the minutes. You're very good clerk. I will still do the minutes if somebody else Thank wants you. to take the title of clerk. Um, I thought Michael was doing the minutes. He's doing the, he does a draft of the minutes and then I do a oh. final of the minutes. So that's not that hard anymore, but I still like to, I still don't mind doing it. Well, thank you. If you're doing all the work, you should get the credit. Can you be the chair and that. the clerk at the same time? Well, the credit. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> the power and the credit. <laughs> oh, well. Who wants to be vice chair? I'll be You could be that. You could be that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Or do you guys have to vote for me? Oh, yeah. I'd nominate you for the book. Or Lizzie for the vice chair. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. We have to uh, determine. So you're being both clerk and no. chair? No, I'll, do, I'll, so then I'll take the clerk position. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to determine the time and place for our regular select board meetings. Um, I guess I would suggest we stay the same the uh, second and fourth. Monday of the month at 6 o'clock at the community room at the Woodbury Public Library. Do we make a motion for that? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion. Okay, all right. Yeah, good. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then we're supposed to determine a newspaper of record for publication of legal notices. And um, I was... I did some research into that last year and found out that it has to be the Times Argus. It has to have uh, be a newspaper that issues a print uh, version and is generally available. I mean, you have to go looking for it. <laughs> it's not available in Woodbury, but I'm sure you can get one in Callis now. <laughs> or you can order it through the mail. Some of these others, like the Morisco okay. one, you can't even get through the mail. so. So I guess I'll make a motion that uh, the Times Argus would be our newspaper of record for legal notices. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the other thing we're supposed to do is um, adopt some rules for procedure, but I don't think we really have time for that tonight, so I made this for you to take home and read. <laughs> and we can talk about that next week. Okay, um, I'm going to stop taking notes. <laughs> um, so, anybody got any adjustments to the select board agenda? Not me. Mm -mm. I have one. All right. We need to have, we need to appoint one of us to sign these overweight permits. That's uh, usually the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Well, we've got it set up now, so the Alfie Wait, could be the clerk. Can, can you can you describe to me oh, the okay. overweight firm? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I'm new to this. Uh, I, mean, I, can make I don't a guess, know but. what the weight is, but um, our roads have a posted weight limit, and uh, if vehicles want to go above that, they have to get a permit, and then I don't know what happens. Um, I think it's a Department of Motor Vehicles requirement. You look at one of these. Yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So folks are just asking for permission to go down the road. Right. While the roads I mean, are this one. Yeah. This one is a fleet permit from Rock of Ages. Six trucks, 120,000 pounds. But, but presumably, Alfie's just forwarding. Yeah, he, these he, he looks at them Great. first. Yeah. They go to the office. They pay like ten dollars or something like that. Yeah, ten dollars for a fleet and five dollars for, for a single, single truck. truck. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So. I guess as long as he's going to keep doing that, I'm the one that's always around, so I could do that. Yeah, if that's the role of the chair, so. I think that's great. Well, that's that's reason I'm here to talk about. Yeah. So okay. Why why are these trucks allowed to haul on this road when they're in the condition that they're in? Are my they? mother met can, one actually, of the Actually, can, can we wait till yeah. public comment? And yeah. Could you hang on just a second? My name is Jason. Hunt. I know, but. I, we have a section where you can talk. There's a public comment section just maybe like oh. three sections down. It's coming right up. Yeah, yeah. coming Real right close. <laughs> so, um, so adjustments, that was the only adjustment. We'll approve these bills later. We approve the minutes. Um, Lizzie, in, in that folder. Oh, yep, I didn't look at it. And, and then we have public comment for items that are not on the agenda. So. And I'm allowed to speak? Yes, please. But, so why are the trucks being allowed to haul on these roads in the condition they're in? Are they posted yet? I mean, I'm sorry. Why aren't they posted? I, Every other town is posted. Yeah, that, I guess we'll Why are they not that. posted? Because if these roads don't get posted, I will call the state of Vermont mm -hmm. and have them posted. Mm -hmm. Because my mother met one of these granite trucks. Mm -hmm. I worked at this quarry for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And... These trucks were never allowed to haul mm. in road conditions like this. These roads are atrocious. I've been up the Cabot Road a couple times, more than a couple times, mm. and these roads are terrible. Why are they tearing up this road and allowed to haul this weight on this road? Mm. And furthermore, how many cubic feet are they hauling off this hill a year? Because the last I knew, they were only allowed 400,000 cubic feet off this hill a year, and they're hauling way more than that. I'd have to check into that. How many? I seem to recall the last permit they got that was allowed a lot more than what they had been previously allowed, but I don't remember the number. Well, they've been hauling a lot more than what they're allowed. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that. They did that when I worked there. Mm -hmm. And these granite trucks hauling on this road when you got pers you know, you got passenger cars going up that road mm -hmm. and you're meeting a truck that's hauling 120,000 pounds coming down that hill and you, you're in a car mm -hmm. and you have to get out of the way of that truck, that ain't right. Mm -hmm. And these roads should be posted. Can, we talk, be posted. can we talk about that when Alfie gets here? Because he's going to be here and I can't answer why they're not posted. I don't know what the time. I know there is a time that the state sets that they have to be posted, but I don't, it's usually later than this. Um, well, uh, mud season so, kind of doesn't yeah, go by dates. That's right. Mud mm -hmm. season goes by what it wants to mm -hmm. go by. And right now, mud season is in full swing. Mm -hmm. And they got granite trucks that got stuck. And I saw where the, the town truck mm -hmm. almost got stuck mm -hmm. up by the court. Mm -hmm. So you're still going to allow these trucks to haul? Like I said, we I need to talk about this with Alfie. Well, he's not here. He will, he will be. be here. He often shows up a little ways into the meeting. But he's not, not on the agenda until 7 o'clock, so. Well, I'm not going to stay here until okay. 7 o'clock. for. We could get your number and we can get back to you as soon as we find out. We have, it's just questions we'll have to ask Alfie. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're bringing this up now and he's not here. Right. So well, you're, you're bringing, bringing it up. It? I should have said that you have to wait until we get to the road commissioner report, but I didn't want to do that because you're obviously anxious to talk about it, so that's fine. Actually, well, so we just can't answer you. 
He's right. Alfie's right. coming in right now. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. So let's maybe give Alfie a second to settle in before yeah. we okay. uh, bombard him with questions. Mm -hmm. But is okay. there any other pop public comment that folks... Michael? Yeah, I got, but I might as well wait to, if he's here, I might as well wait till he gets in as well, because... You're okay. just for him for yeah. road stuff? Okay. Right. Patrick's on the agenda for later, so I think... Mm -hmm. Do you want to go on the town meeting recap? going to take a while. Just okay, a question, cool. if people are here with public comment and questions, mm -hmm. should we, we skip switch the order a little bit just to well, sit through it all? Well, Alfie's here now, so we could. Correct. Yeah. Although, yeah, we, I guess we could. We don't have to change his whole uh, report, but um, we have a person here who has some questions about why the roads aren't posted yet. And okay. Yeah. Who's that person? Jason. Okay. So why are they why are they now posted? Um, because there's not much value in it, quite honestly. No much value. Why? Because uh, your mother didn't meet a, a tractor trailer loaded with two blocks and got crowded off the road. Um, right in the mud hole going up the cabin road. I worked with this quarry for twenty years. I know exactly what's going on with this quarry. Okay. Oh. And uh these roads should be posted. There should not be. Grant, I saw where your your truck got almost stuck just past uh, Deb Barrett's house in the mud, and they had to pick the plow up because they couldn't go through. Yeah. So why why are they not posted? If the truck if the town truck can't get through, why are the granite trucks allowed to go through? Well, um, my reasoning is because. You can only stop a few trucks posted to the to the till. You can only stop a few trucks from traveling these roads. The most trucks that travel that road are granite trucks. That's it. And, I and think if you post that road, comply. and Steve Dale knows it, and Donnie Gallison knows it, Donnie Gallison won't haul, haul that road. I've had Steve Dale with won't haul that road either if it's posted. Okay. Look. Is there a rule uh, of the state? Gives you a date by which the roads must be posted, or is it there up is, to the town? It's not a rule. It's up okay. to the town. Okay. Town discretion. Well, I'll okay. call the state and I'll find that out myself. Then. No, he just well, answered I, the question. I don't know why I'm being attacked here, my friend. I don't know who you are. I, I live in Woodbury. I've lived in Woodbury for okay, a long great. time. Okay, great. Well, I deserve a little bit of respect, and you're attacking me right now. Yeah, I am. Because why are the trucks hauling on this road? They always posted this road. Always posted this road. I believe the, the, the granite quarry pays this town a I don't give a shit money. what the granite quarry pays. I think, I think we actually need to move on, like a different conversation. I Unless so you too. can be respectful, sir. We're going to need to move on. So, so we, we hear you complain. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it sounds like it's up to the town. We can have a conversation with Alfie about like how that happens. But I no. think... It's so like we can get back to you, but I think at this moment... I think it's, it's time for me to call the state of Vermont I think and get the state of Vermont uh, involved. I think that's fine. That's fine. But, yeah. I, but, I, I, look, I have no, no problem with posting the roads. I've done it for years. I've been in this business for 25 years, so I know about posting the roads. Okay? I know. But this road was never posted last year. Last year was an exceptional year for not posting road because it was actually a good year for the trucks to haul, and I understand that. Okay. But this year is not. I mean, they had a granite truck get stuck at the top of the hill on flats, and they had to pull it out. In the, on the snow. Loaded. On the snow. No, in the mud. Okay, I don't know where that, but. And you go right up past, uh, right by the Superman Rock, by the entrance to the quarry, and you can see right where your truck almost got stuck. And if you don't want to believe that, that's totally up to you. I don't care. I'm not. <laughs> so they've had a I'm truck get stuck, and you think they're still going to try to have haul, hauling out of there, even though they know the, the road conditions? I mean, they used well, to say... Look at these road conditions. Do you want to take your car, you take your Subaru up there mm. and go through there? Now, I'm, tell not, me how I'm you, not telling you that it's a good thing. I'm just trying to... Figure out what, what makes it And what's it making it worse? Different. These granite trucks that are hauling 120,000 cube 
out of there. Yeah, we need to talk with them, I think. Mike, yeah? yeah if I can comment, I used to do that in my other life as far as road enforcement. And the municipality has the right to post a road at any time it feels it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's why when they get their permit, they have to have they have to have insurance on file, number one. And and the reason for that is this time of the year is I think LP will, will acknowledge the time of the year where you sustain the most culprit damage because of the heavy loads going over and the roads being soft and, and it's crushing culverts. That's pretty much how this permit thing all came about was because of damage to highways and, and culverts included, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the town can put this into effect any time they want to put it into effect. It can go into effect tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, can I, can I ask one question about road posting? Can, sure. can it be that some roads are posted and other roads are no. not? No. They, okay. Once it, they all the town roads one must road be posted. Post, they all post. Got it. it. it okay. says it right on the clarify all right. roads to be posted. Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to apply to things like fuel trucks and garbage trucks, which is... No, well, they that's, don't. that's my point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but it, does it does restrict uh, the majority of the traffic. Logging trucks have to get... Yeah. Yeah. And the ones with the weight permits, quite honestly, are the ones that will do as much, if not more damage, than any of the mm -hmm. fuel trucks and whatever. Mm -hmm. So if because, the, if, uh, Sorry, just another clarifying question. So if the roads were posted, um, presumably like the quarry, which is, sounds like that's a big deal, they could uh, apply for uh, these, these same weight overweight permits. Well, they, no, that's required anyways. That's yeah. required anyways. It okay. has nothing to do with the road posting. The overweight oh. permit yeah. is required regardless. Got it. <clears throat> okay. Because and once they issue that permit, that once the roads are posted, those permits are out the window. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're going to go by... Well, they, they, the they, roads are posted, those, those permits don't apply anymore. No. All right. Uh, right. We'll come so up speed. in my past right. career, we were, they would give the road commissioner the right to allow at certain times. Like if a logger is logging and the roads are frozen, right. he's not going to create damage. He goes in, gets his wood out. When it's froze, he gets out. We could do the same similar type of thing for for the quarry. Right, exactly. Which is what they, they supposed to be. Before. Is what is supposed to be happening. Right. I had a conversation with Jeremy up there at the office. He said, "Are the roads posted?" I said, "No, they're not yet." I said, I'm hoping for respect from people to go when it's frozen and not create problems. Steve Dale so does not this. give you that respect. He okay. goes up there okay. all the time. Well, Steve Dale works for the quarry. They're, he's a contracted... Right, exactly. For then, the quarry. Then that means you have to post the roads so there's a sign down there saying they can't haul. Well, there's a sign there that says they can't go until 8 o'clock in the morning, but they're right. up there at the that, 8 o'clock in the morning. So you can put all the signs you want. you still got to have enforcement. This is my point. This is what when the, when the roads are posted, the roads are posted. They're, those signs are up here for a reason, and they do step stop at that sign and wait until the time it is to come down off the hill. Yes, there has, there has been times that they broke that law, but for the most part, they do abide by that. But when you post a road and the roads are getting tore up, you go up that road. You you must know you work on it. Yeah, I, I travel that road. Off. You go up that road right now. To find out road. how that road is. I, I've been up that road. You get stuck in the ruts. You can't get out, and they're so deep mm -hmm. that it. Can it's I, terrible. Can I make a recommendation that maybe at, when we get to the road commissioner's report, we can talk a little bit more about posting roads. Um, we had public comment. We've heard the, the, the comment, and then I think maybe it's time to move on. Let Mike make a comment. We'll move on with the agenda. We have a whole section about the road commissioner report. We can talk about this then. If I can add, because I probably please, won't be here. Please, but, but the last thing I'll say on the permit issue is, and, and Alfie is right, there, there was a time, and, and in some towns they still allow it, where they can get a hold of the road foreman and say, all right, if the roads are frozen, you can go in. But you also got to be out where they're still frozen. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the problem, there's a problem with that, and that is, if you have a particular road that you're having an issue with and you decide you want to call motor vehicle and have them go up and do some enforcement and they know that you're letting them go in verbally, they'll tell you it's any it's everybody or nobody. It's you can't do because they have no way of knowing 
who's got who made a phone call? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a court issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just that's the last comment I'll give you on mm -hmm. that. Thank yeah. you. But it's something sense. you should be aware of. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we're going to put the the quarry out of business for well. I think let's for now. They, let's they talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. We put the quarry out of business. They've always posted the road. Always. You were the you're the road commissioner now. Jim. All the other road commissioners always posted the Alfie, roads, and they let's always talk about called this the when we get to the, okay. the commission to the. And to they the always road. said, and we'll move we, on from this this conversation. Can I think. we haul in when it's frozen? Yes, you can. Right, but and when it's not frozen, but the they're, they're, they're the not doesn't allow that. <laughs> they're not going by that. Verify that though. Make sure that's still the way. But that's the way it was, yeah. and for under, understandably because it it, pro, it posed problems in court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if my mother gets run off the road again by a granite truck, and even though I work for that quarry, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. I will pursue it further. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I said my piece. Your phone, Appreciate you coming in. Your phone number, Jason? 917-3896. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Okay, back to business. Other business. Any more? Oh. Public, my public comment. Your, your public comment. Oh, Jay, we're done. We're still on public comment. <laughs> uh, I had the opportunity to go out early this morning. I say early. Uh, Is this a road related comment? Yes. And um, roads weren't quite up to snuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to make a stop. Uh, at a facility in Hardwood. I thought they, their schools had closed because the roads weren't up to stuff, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, and stopping there, I found out that they had a school bus that got stuck this morning. In Woodbury? Yes. Oh, dear. Um, I was there two minutes after. after yeah, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, and I understand that you offered to sand and they could follow you. Oh, she did. She followed me yeah, all the way around. Yeah, no, no. But I guess where I'm going with it is, with the road crew and the money that we're, we're spending, why can't we maintain the roads so that the school buses can get out and about in a timely manner like they should? Mm -hmm. And even if there's no school, with a 20% school tax increase that we got you know, staring at us, we got townspeople who need to get to work so they can pay those, mm -hmm. those taxes. Um, you know, and I, I apologize. I, I'm trying to keep it civil only because there's ladies here, and, and if I slip that. up, I apologize. <laughs> but so the question is, who is it up to to make sure those roads are done and done in a timely manner? Is it the select board? Is it the road crew? I mean. Does the select board oversee the road crew? Because I don't know the answer. Well, to the road, questions. the select board hires the road commissioner, and the road commissioner hires the road crew with some input from the select board sometimes, and we basically um, count on him to keep the roads open. And when there are complaints, he prefers that the complaints go directly to him. But if they come to us, we pass them along to him and. But Mike, to further answer your question, my understanding is it's collectively all of our responsibility, Alfie's, Diana, Chris, now, and mine, to. You yeah, know. I guess that answers my. Uh, that's where I'm going is, mm -hmm. one would assume that the select board oversees the road commissioner and because the, the road commissioner is not an elected position, correct? Yeah. Correct. Right. It's appointed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that almost in itself would dictate that mm -hmm. the appointing authority oversees. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's the select board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's that's what I'm going to select board. So, players. you know, not that I'm after a piece of your Easter. It's just, <laughs> it's just that I, I, you know, you'd hate to see something happen to to a kid on mm -hmm. the school bus because it was preventable, mm -hmm. and that's my main reason for being here right now. And one has to assume that not all the parents are aware that there are issues out there. Uh, that being said, I would hope that with some changes would be made to make sure that these roads are. I mean, this is a trying time. I, I, I'll give you that. I gave this a lot of thought before mm -hmm. I came in here. The roads are in rough shape. Probably shouldn't be posted for, for what it's worth. 
Um, but we got to, the school buses should come before the quarries or anything else, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned, because if we can't take care of our kids, you know, excuse my language, mm -hmm. what the hell good are we? I mean, that's where I'm at. And that, that's, a, that's a burden that falls on you folks. Mm -hmm. And I would hope you would take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Mike, I appreciate all of what you just said. Um, I do want to just throw out in all of our collective defense that we are down a guy right now on the road crew. So there's only two guys, am I right, That's currently right. taking care of all the roads and it's kind of a mess. But I 100% agree that um, we need to make it a priority to get the roads ready for the buses. And I think that the four of us need to talk about, you know, just having a good plan to make sure that that's happening. And also, um, hopefully we'll have three guys soon. With all due respect, and I, I totally understand your comment, but there was a time not all that long ago we had two full-time road crews. Mm -hmm. And they did West Woodbury, they did everything. So with, with, mm -hmm. when you have four people and the budget that we have, I'm assuming they get paid overtime after they go over the 40 hours on the road. It's, mm -hmm. So that first 40 hours, it's... The only thing is, I still say that you've got to take that extra step for the kids. You know, you... Can, can I say that I think we've heard you, for sure. We have. We can have, we can have a conversation with Alfie, but um, I don't okay. know that it's productive mm -hmm. to have the constant back and forth with... No, I, I think I, that... I'm not coming here as an could, adversary. No, I no, just, no, I know. We could just go on. It could go on for a long time. So I think mm -hmm. definitely heard what you said, Mike. And I think we can have a conversation with Alfie, uh, a continuing conversation about how to proceed with uh, with roads in terms of posting, in terms of having ready for the buses. Um, yeah, I'm, definitely I'm, heard you. I'm good, you know, and okay. the proof will be in the pudding, obviously. Can you be a great chair? <laughs> And Mike, we took um, Jason's number to be able to get a hold of him, you know, with follow-up if needed. Do you want to leave your number with us so we can reach out to you? We'll, we'll you know, I mean, you want my phone number, so if you want to talk, is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you'd like to leave it. All right. Yeah. 802-456-7479. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. If you're going to leave a nasty message, make sure you do I won't leave a nasty message. <laughs> Okay. That's the overweight thing. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Paul, you weren't on the agenda, so are you? I'm with Patrick. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're way down. Let's yeah. see. Uh, do we? Do, hmm? do we? Do you guys want to stay for the whole meeting, or do you want us to uh, ask the chair? Actually, do we want they to bump stay. Patrick and and? And Paul oh, up so where that, are they? Uh, so they don't have it next on the agenda. They are right. It's next six twenty. Oh, they yeah. are. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, they are. Okay. We're so <laughs> six twenty. Hey, we're almost on time. Uh, uh, Lizzie wanted to talk about. Well, have a town meeting recap and talk about the order of the warning items and dealing with public questions that come up so but I think you guys are here for the last item which is I'm guessing that you're here for this uh, follow up on concerns about drug traffic addiction crime situation is that why you're here Patrick oh you want um, to so okay maybe we could jump to sure. that and Paul is okay were you wanting I'm to okay discuss that. that too <laughs> <laughs> okay so go all right so you all know what happened at town meeting, you were all there. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I was surprised. Uh, it started pre-town meeting when we had the, the start of conversation. I was surprised by the extent of the problem that we have. I know, I've, I've known we have a problem. Everybody knows there's a problem. But to, to hear Paul talk about the numbers and the uh, nature of some of those mm -hmm. incidents, um, struck me as it, it's just unfair to the fire department for starters mm -hmm. to expect them to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But it also seems to me that people in town are more at risk than some of us realize. Now, if you know where I live, I'm about on the end of a dirt road, 
nobody wants to go out and break into my house because they might not get out of there. Um, but people who live on the main roads and whatnot are being, I think, victimized. And there's so little we can do about it, you know, the people in the room. Mm. I, just, I, I just think we owe it to the fire department at a minimum to have some kind of a town conversation. Is there anything we can do? What can we do as a town without a police force um, to minimize the problem? and or to help the fire department deal with what they have to deal with. I don't have any answers. Um, I just think we need to have that conversation. And if in the end we can't come up with anything, okay, so be it. If, if, if in the end we can't agree, I guess so be it. But I think we need to have a serious conversation. Now, I know they're having a similar conversation in Hardwick right now, and I don't want to duplicate that necessarily, but that's hard work. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure that they're going to pay that much attention to what's going on in, in Woodbury. So, I'm just here to ask what you think. How should we proceed? I, I think it should be a really inclusive conversation. Everybody should be invited. Um, it should probably have different ways of communicating with each other. But how? where do we get started? And I. You know, I've talked to Paul briefly on the phone before tonight, um, and he shared some of his thoughts. But I just, and I don't want to take up much time. I, I, I just sort of pushed me in the right direction here. What do you think we should try to do? And I'm perfectly willing to spend time helping to organize whatever we can organize. Um, that's not the issue, but I don't want to waste time. I don't have any preconceived notions. I want some advice and what you think is the best way to proceed. Just to get people involved with this one. Mm. Not necessarily to solve the problem. Because I want to know what everybody thinks. Mm. I think the town needs to be bought in if, as a town, if we really want to come up with a solution <clears throat> that has staying power and that will work. So that's my pitch. Mm. Just like yeah, a community forum, perhaps? Uh, like a community forum? That would uh, be one way to go about it. Yeah. You know, when we had the whole conversation about changing town meeting, um, we did a lot of things, right? As I recall, we, we sent out a survey. I also don't think it was hurt uh, to have the, basically the authority of the, of the town clerk where it's saying, well, well, we, we want to give you this. any. And, we can't give you, you any know, authority to have a meeting. Sure, we, we can help. No, you don't, but here's the we thing. If I'm going to reach out to people, if I can put something in town in front of a farm, I'd like to be able to say that the select board has blessed mm -hmm. having a, mm -hmm. a conversation. It has more bite to it. Yeah, here's yeah. That kind of thing. So could I make a motion right now that we make an official statement on camera um, that we are in favor of you starting a committee to you know, try to see what we can do about the drug issue? Sounds fine. Okay. I made a motion. I'll second that. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And if you have any suggestions about people like suggesting Mike, who who probably would be really helpful and should be involved, let me know. John Reed was pretty vocal at this. John would be good. John. Who's that? Oh, John. I thought John was going to be here tonight, but I guess not. Now, when we did that town survey before, did that have any questions on there about the drug problems? No, it was pretty much focused on town meeting. Okay. Yeah. As I say, because I still have that box of those in the, the vault. So, Patrick, what would be, and Paul, what would be a reasonable, like, follow-up time to put you on the agenda to, like, a month from now, a month and a half from now? I've been coming on the second meeting of the month, so probably not this next second, but maybe the... Second meeting of the next meeting, you can't wait that long. Oh, at least that long, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's a sad fact, but it's going to take time to get the wheels rolling. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Well, everybody I think we want to be deliberative. That's all. Yeah, I don't know the answer to this problem either. I just, I have the same concern mm -hmm. about one of our folks getting, we've had to take some pretty mm -hmm. significant risks at times to, because mm -hmm. you're just yeah, leaving someone dying in their house or on mm -hmm. the side of the road. Well, certainly when Paul started talking about some of the worst things that he's experienced in the last month, people were very interested. I probably should have been having this conversation a long time ago. We've just mm. been kind of keeping my mouth shut, but mm. that was probably the wrong thing to do. But. So, you know, 
I don't know if it's something that money can help. We've already found out that we've problem. discovered that we can, can't throw more money at the sheriff's department. They can't do anything. They, they don't do any law enforcement. I think it would be good to have state reps or, you know, yeah, I think part of that this is, might this be not just the a, lieutenant from the uh, state police barracks. Because yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know after yeah. 2018 they did some additional patrols which slowed mm -hmm. things down mm -hmm. quite a bit. But again, they're stretched. So, so Michael, your suggestion is have Avram and... Um, yeah, this yeah. is people. Somebody needs to do something about this. Mm. It's, it's not, not just here; it's Cal's it's too. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cal is much with the same, same problems state. as we are here. Yeah. yeah, there's no such thing as township lines. Nope. This thing. they're it's all just, over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Michael, I think you're right, and I think, but I, you know, I, right after the session, I think we should do that. I mean, it's the end of the session program. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think they're pretty tied up, but I think right afterwards. We, it seems to me we should be in a position of having some kind of a public meeting, invite them and talk about the problem and hear what they have to say about yeah. solutions, which they're not going to have any really solutions either. I think we're going to have to get really creative, and I do think we're going to have to spend some money, wherever, however we spend it. I don't mm -hmm. know yet. But. It'll make our town more attractive to live in if we have it's kind a, of a plan, right for, plan for this. Mm. Okay, that's all. Ward Sunday, just go drive around about two in the morning. No. Yeah. The state police are not active from two to nope. five in the morning. And when I had this problem with a neighbor, that's when all the business happened. Correct. Because we'll make a call for assistance, and I'll get told the troopers an hour and a half out, and you got to just deal with the circumstance you're in. We're getting mm -hmm. called to. I mean, my favorite call was someone screaming for help in the middle of the night in the Woodbury Cemetery. That's a. <coughs> EMS response. So I had to drive up in the cemetery with who knows what was going to go on. It's like, where are the police? Oh, they're an hour and a half away. Hmm. Nobody, they all hmm. ran where it was. But that's the kind of nonsense that's going on. We get, I got a call for a uh, car in the lake middle of the night. And someone had tried to harm themselves, drove the car into South Woodbury hmm. Lake. And I'm like, there's nobody in it. I'm like, why are we here? Well, the police were hmm. so far away, they just had you guys come. That kind of thing is going on. Yeah. My yeah. son's a dispatcher. Yeah. He goes, he's frustrated because they're doing it all over the state. They're, they're just sending mm -hmm. local fire to check stuff. You know, it's just, it really shouldn't be mm happening. -hmm. Yeah, that's not right either. So that's what's going we, on. we pay our constable $500 a year. Um, there's classes and there's things that we think could... he might be interested in becoming a certified whatever the next level is. I don't know. He's talking well, about moving. He would, Which... but put it out oh. that it's possible for somebody and to have training so that it's not. <laughs> One of us, I carry a gun to work every day. I, I do deposits, <laughs> and I feel comfortable mm -hmm. walking mm -hmm. out of there knowing that that car that's sitting next to me, mm -hmm. full of people, mm -hmm. knowing who they are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think if we're paying a, somebody to do constable stuff, that they should have some sort of training to deal with this. Yeah, um, I mean, we could always have neighbors and people you know, you don't know what you're, they're, they're holding for weapons mm -hmm. inside that car. Mm -hmm. So banging on the window and telling them to get the hell out of here, and that, I've tried that many times. Mm -hmm. really? And they just get out and do a little dance mm -hmm. in the driveway on, in the video camera, mm -hmm. not giving a who. Mm -hmm. if, if I can comment on, on Randy's statement, it would be nice if, if we had somebody that has some training, but I will tell you that the first part of that training, they're going to tell that individual, you don't go into a situation unless you know you get backup. So now you're going to have to have two mm. people involved. Yeah. So uh, these are not easy but solutions. It's not an easy it's solution. Not. It's mm. not. So, and, uh, Constable, there are different levels of what they can do, and the final one with the law enforcement, they have to actually well, you get go through part -time certification. Training. You've yeah. got all, you're looking you know, at a committee that's just people in town. We're not certified to do anything. Mm. Right. Well, We don't have right. training, but we want to do something about the drug issue, so mm -hmm. it's either one person have to be trained, and then... And it's even more than it, 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 all these other issues we're having kind of mm -hmm. tied to this, because what happens is you've got this low-level user salespeople that are really not a lot of... They're not really a danger to you other than the chaos that they cause and the thievery that they cause, but what happens is somebody stole some money or someone didn't get the drugs, and then the next level comes up. We've had people here from Hartford, Connecticut, that are Crip gang members that are super mm. dangerous. I mean, they just they walk up, shoot you in the face. I mean, that's that's 
that's the three kind of levels I see. Mm -hmm. That was that 40 years ago. Yeah, it was, there's some super dangerous folks that come up here. Mm -hmm. They're just here, hit, men, hit people, and they're just, those are the people who want to be scared. The other ones are just a, yeah. this general din of problem you're having mm -hmm. all the time. And mental health is a part of it. And mental health is a big issue, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you get the wannabes. Yeah. The what? Want to be. Want to be what? Want to be the big. Don't mess with my turf and do Don't mess with my turf. Oh. There's the fun. Yeah, there's people who are finding people beat up next to the road. And mm. So what, what I'll do is the next step is I, I think I'll just put something go diplomatically like worded on front porch for him and say we want to start a conversation and we want to put together a small group. I'm not looking for a room full of 100 people mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. but if we can get a group of eight to 12 people who are actually concerned about it and mm -hmm. want to sit down and dig in. That would be really it's helpful. Then, maybe the police. Not two weeks, but maybe in six or eight weeks, we'd be ready to come back to you and, and share some ideas and start forming a plan. Yeah, right? I think it might be useful for more than one, for a couple of people to go sort of monitor what's going on in Hardwick. Lucinda said she's been yes. going to some of those well, meetings. Well, she's there tonight, so, in fact. Oh, and okay. I will talk to Lucinda about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They uh, seem to be, at least according to their notices that I've read, they're mostly concentrating on keeping drugs out of school, but it well, could be a, a bigger... Well, that's part of it. I, yeah. um, so but I it's all the same. Yeah. Problem than that. yeah, it's a multi-layered yeah. thing. It's, mm -hmm. There are big problems like mm -hmm. how do you, what do you do with kids and education, and, mm -hmm. but that's <laughs> what you do with people that are actively yeah. dealing in town. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But it might be part of the same problem. Well, you, may want, you, know, you might find yourself in a situation where you've got a, a combined effort between Hardwick and Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Because like sure. I said, very they, yeah. they, when they reach that mm -hmm. town line, they say, well, yeah, they don't no, stop no, here. That means nothing yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Yeah, sure. and if they ever decide that they have extra people that they could hire, we could start talking again right. about that. If you had that conversation that. when I was on the board, we'd yeah. talk about but they they were, but people. They, did, they couldn't get enough people right. to cover their own I, I actually firmly believe if the word gets out that we're trying to deal with this and that we're being proactive, people will not choose to stop here to do the work. Really? Oh, yeah. sure. Why, why yeah. take a chance? Yeah, that's, that's been my experience when you when the, put a little heat on it. Even people driving around, being around, it's just not the safest thing to do because I had a problem on my road and I just made a point of pulling up to the cars and telling them they were on the wrong street. Mm. Mm. But again, who wants, you know, not everybody's going to do that. And they would, no, no. you get a, hey, it's a free country, and I said, it'll be a free country somewhere else. Mm. They, mm. Anyway, we'll do whatever we can mm. to come up with some kind of a plan. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to say on my way out the door, I, I agree with you. The roads situation is just not what it was. I've been here for 40 years. I didn't yeah. plow my drive. That's how much I don't want to do it. Right. It's it just yeah. tear it off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm amazed you even got the road plowed mm. from what I saw. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So thank you all for being civil and all that. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> so the next thing Lizzie wanted to talk about the, uh, I think you mentioned the, maybe having the, what did you say? I've got it here. Uh, we see comments about the order of discussion at town meeting, suggestions to save the talking points for last so the people can vote earlier and not necessarily have to stay. I just want to let you know that the reason we developed that format for the warning is uh, because those two budget items at the end can be amended if some of the stuff in the meantime doesn't mm -hmm. get approved. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do all the other stuff and then we do the big budget items at the end. Plus there, there was a time when we used to have to um, make the meeting last longer so the ladies of the school could sell their lunches. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so, but having the representatives come at the end. And that was bad. Yeah. yeah, that was bad. It wasn't necessary. No. Yeah, that Typically was the... it's during lunch and not a different yeah. situation. Right. The... But taking up the whole time, people just got sick of waiting mm -hmm. and they left. Yeah. And they talked too, too long. I don't know if we're going to have that same guy next year. That was exactly what was brought to me, too, yeah. was that that could have been <laughs> saved for later. And then also um, the information on the school, even though it was really like important for everybody to hear it, I think there were some people who 
weren't that interested in hearing it and would have rather just gotten right to the voting. Right. Um, whether or not that's a good thing or not. Um, yeah, but so that's good to, <clears throat> I think a lot of people were uh, not that interested as the conversation went on and on with uh -huh. the representatives. But the, what's different this year is usually they go to three other towns and then they come to Woodbury. Mm -hmm. But this year we were the only one on Saturday, so they could come oh, some, okay. I don't know who went, who decided on 1030, Ginger or somebody talked to them. And uh, so they ended up coming at 1030 and that kind of messed everything up. We were just getting started and then we got delayed. So and yeah, I don't think you had your 10 minute stopwatch on it. <laughs> but if the voters wanted to hear about the school budgets, they had a meeting Tuesday night mm -hmm. for the elementary. Mm -hmm. There were nine Woodbury representatives mm -hmm. there. How many on the school board? Two mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. myself. So there were six other mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Hazen, it was Chris, Stephen, and myself mm -hmm. that showed up for that meeting. Yeah. No other mm -hmm. townsperson. Mm -hmm. I think I think my rationale for for wanting to to speak at town meeting and I didn't actually speak, but wanting the the school boards mm -hmm. to be represented is because we had so little turnout at those meetings, and so my concern was is that those folks would go into a vote without any kind of like background knowledge mm -hmm. at all, and, and I know it's up to them. I know it's their responsibility mm -hmm. to do that, but um, um, and, and maybe we can put that after all the voting has happened next year, like that happens later. But um, I just thought it was important for for just a quick snapshot, um, mm -hmm. so folks know what they're getting into when they vote um, for those school budgets. And so yeah, we it can... used to be that we you know we would vote on our our school budget at town meeting, right? And so oh, yeah. then there was a really valuable discussion right there, and it could be mm -hmm. amended from the floor. But mm -hmm. um, we don't do that anymore. So that seems like the only time. Yeah, yeah. and Anna Anna Peltz wanted to say a few words too, and it used to be that. They would put a report in the town report. They don't do that anymore. It, uh, it, it, but I think, I think people won't want to know. Is it that we can't put one in the town report anymore? No, I don't think so. You can put in what you want. So we could. It's just that the schools, yeah, they paid yeah. for it. So they reimbursed used to They used to, they used to put the whole mm. thing in, and they, yeah, they would pay for that. So now it would be, it would be on us to pay for it. Well, the Paisa never paid. did, but the elementary school board did used to put their whole report in their budget, it would take up like half of the report. Right. So if the select board decided to include the 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 school report in the town report, we could, and we could just I, yeah, decide to pay for it. I don't think they. I don't think the OSSU would want to do that. They've got all. They've got their system down, so you just get to click on a little thing on your phone and see the budget. I think, that, I, really that. I think it would be good to have in the town report. I think that they it would, would be, do it. Yeah, it would. You think they would? I think all we'd have to do is tell our representatives to the Hazen board mm. that hey, that's I what we want to do. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that, they, do have a, they did have a small printed report that was available at the town office, right? Mm -hmm. Both for Hazen and for Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And we had two people come in and pick them up. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's something that the board's interested in, how do we remember to do that next year? It being... Making a note. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take responsibility for it because I'm thinking ahead to next year for moderating. Mm -hmm. Although mm -hmm. moderate only serves through Article 1 and then, mm -hmm. there's, a, then there's an election. But mm -hmm. um, at least up through Article 1, I'll have some notes. So if it's me or the next moderator, I can... I can take some guidance from mm -hmm. these meetings and find out how to better run, mm -hmm. moderate the meeting. Now, so that's one point. Who will remember? I'll take responsibility for Thank that. Thank you. Um, there's another point, too. I'll suggest this. It's an idea. Um, for special guests that come, I know in past years it could have been the superintendent of the schools. Now it's um, also it's commonly the uh, representatives that come. If there's a sense from the select board and the people of the town that there'd like to be a limited time for that visit, for the representatives mm -hmm. to make remarks, and then for some questions, the moderator could propose suspending the rules for a specified period mm -hmm. of time, rather than suspending the rules to allow them um, to allow discussion for 
an unspecified time. So mm -hmm. if there's a sense in that, moderator could, Sorry. could ask to suspend the rules for up to 30 mm -hmm. minutes and then people in, the, in their seats would know that, um, you know, that there's just yeah, finite yeah. time there for that. So that's a way to do it. Can I ask a question? Mm. It, is there anything that prevents us from when we make the agenda for the for town meeting to actually have that as an agenda item that the representatives will speak? Like, well, they, we can give them one time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it could come. We could just have it as an item mm -hmm. after all the voting. Exactly. And yeah. then if they show up early, we haven't gotten yeah. then they just have to wait around. Exactly. Yeah, we could. We I could think that's, tell. Yeah, we didn't like. I said this year was was different because. Whoever told them to show up at 10:30 or said it was okay to whatever that wasn't part of our planning. It just happened. So, mm -hmm. and then somebody made the point that maybe that schools should school representatives should talk after the representatives were here so they could hear that part of it. So, fortunately, you didn't let that become too much of a mess. It just got a little long. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to say what they wanted. So yeah, so, yeah we can yeah. we can change things around when that happens. Somebody mentioned having some of our senators come, but oh god, that didn't happen. <laughs> Is the library going to do that? Uh, meet with your legislators again? Probably. We did last October. It's yeah. very successful. Yeah, we had three senators and two representatives. Yeah, we had dinner. So, Lizzie, did you have anything else on that one subject? Yeah, just order? a couple, of, and this is just me regurgitating comments from other people. Um, there was one comment, um, somebody thought it would be a good idea not to include the section at the end where we let people make comments that haven't already been sort of like vetted. So, I'm not saying I agree, I actually don't agree with this. I think we should let people make comments, but there was... Um, a suggestion that we make sure that everyone who wants to comment has, you know, gone through a process beforehand. Well, quite often, sometimes they do. There'll be a concerted effort by a group of whatever, environment, environmental group or whatever, um, to circulate a uh, petition. And then it comes to the select board, and the select board decides whether to make it a um, an item on the agenda, because that has happened over the years. We've had lots of issues, important issues, that this is the only opportunity for townspeople to maybe, maybe have a voice in, even though it's a small voice, but, you know, our legislators do the same thing, and in Congress they do the same thing. They get a group and say, we want this word to end or whatever, and it all adds up sometimes. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't agree that we should limit it. But the way it was done this year was a little informal, you know, but it went okay. I thought it was well done. Yeah. Um, there's just a few things that you know got a little long, but <laughs> yeah. So specifically, I think their the recommendation. Can you remind me? Because I think I saw that email too from, yeah, from yeah, Jim, right? Yep. So yeah. there was actually a little bit more to it too. So there was a recommendation that we have anything that's going to be discussed vetted beforehand, so that there's nothing that's not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like because it was brought to us, we should at least talk about it for sure and mm -hmm. yeah. give our opinions. Yep. So pre-town meeting, which has been great for the library to do, which is given the count for attendance. So much more than it has in the past. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. But that's where people need to come. That's mm -hmm. the pre-town meeting. You mm -hmm. come to to discuss things that you want to bring up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and maybe that's mm -hmm. when we should have the representatives come pre pre-town meeting. It's a good um, idea. And make it more mm. more. Um, that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. More. What do I want to say? So that people know that whether it's signs, whether it's because that was mm -hmm. another thing that. People have come into the office and going, what the town meeting was supposed to be on Tuesday, why can't I vote? Um, but yeah, if we can kind of wiggle things into pre-town meeting, 
versus it happening at town meeting. I think that's a great idea, Brandy, because there are some people who literally just want to show up and vote. And that's and just it. They should still be able to vote. You know, like I, right. I agree right. that there should be information given out, but for those people that don't want to sit through it or can't sit through it, it would, I don't know, it'd be nice to let people get to the voting. That's what they want to do. Some towns have done, I know, I read something about Morrisville having, I think they're going to Australian ballot on a lot of things, but they had like a big pre-town meeting with a dinner and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. opportunity for people to talk informally about, look, but anyways, that's. There was one oh. more um, comment that was made, and I'm just gonna throw it out so that we've covered everything. And that was the same person that mm -hmm. suggested um, having mm -hmm. things vetted, also suggested that we shouldn't be making public statements um, on issues that are not town issues. So things, you know, global politics, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and just throw it out mm -hmm. because it came it's up. It's a proud Vermont think, tradition. <laughs> well, and I think Steve ruled on it and yes. ruled that it wasn't town business mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the the assembly they did voted to do it anyway. To suspend the rules. Mm -hmm. and yes. I don't yep. know that there's a whole lot we can do about mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. That's just. Right. So. It's what people wanted. Yeah. Everybody got to vote on it, right? So good suggestion mm -hmm. but from him, but I don't know if there's yeah. any, yeah. any. One person didn't like it well. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not sure we can do anything about it. I didn't like it either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd like to add another suggestion to improving town meeting, and that's on. Uh, recommendation that I received that the candidates for office be given an opportunity to stand and introduce their candidacy before the election mm -hmm. and that's my fault I didn't prompt that um, that introduction mm -hmm. so I take yeah it used to be now. that you weren't supposed to talk about that no electioneering on the floor at all but now the law has been changed right. so that people can get up and at least introduce themselves to right it says in the in the law the Vermont, I think it's a, to the extent permitted by by the voters so it's at it's essentially at the discretion of the voters to allow mm -hmm. someone to mm -hmm. introduce their candidacy mm -hmm. but it's not a time for debate or comments mm -hmm. by anybody else but it's another uh, note I'll, I'll put for next year to remember if I'm there to. So uh, when to, somebody is, is nominated, then you would ask if that person wants to get up and sure, yeah, say hi. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It wouldn't be something you'd put on the warning or. No, or, no okay. No. No. Point of order to, yeah. to re re yeah. or suggest. That they could stand. Yeah. Okay. Steve, thanks for keeping all these mental notes for us. And also, just thank you for moderating a town meeting. It was really well done, and I appreciate it. It's a hard job. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we move on to the town clerk's report? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, the only thing the town clerk has is elections. And I would like to thank everybody who stepped up to help me. Mm -hmm. It was a hard day. So. Benny, did did you know that Robin had a death in the Yeah, family? I did. Yeah. I'm really sorry. We can come back to the town yeah, report just, too uh, if you want to circle back to it. What do you want? We had a uh, we have 103 registered voters. And out of that, 203 voted. Um, 94 Democrats, 109 Republicans. This is what stepped up to vote on mm. Tuesday. Can we take a little moment of silence? Um, Terry was on sure. the library board, part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah.
I'm sorry I hardly ever got to know her at all. I'd like to give my condolences Thank you. to you, Robin, and to Terry's family. Yeah, I served with Terry on the library board for years. Um, she had uh, she had a very bright smile, hearty laugh. She was very keen with the numbers. She was our treasurer mm. and vice chair. Um, and it's a loss to the board, the library, our community, and our family. So I'm very sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So that kept you busy for the last few weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Brandy and I and others chipped in and got things going. Absolutely. Kept things going. Teamwork. Absolutely. So you want to go next to the town treasurer's report? Yeah. Michael, I have one for you. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> reports I had given to you, balance, financial statement, and you to do from. There's three different reports in one um, packet. So cash receipts taken in over the last two weeks, uh, $1,160.40. Um, fleet permits, records restoration, land recording, land copies, and vault fees. Delinquencies taken in over the last two weeks, $2,520.30. Adding that, putting on my different hat right now, um, being the delinquency tax collector. Um, right now, there is $93,880.47 that's still delinquent. Um, payroll, the last two weeks, $7,475.18. Accounts payable, $11,714.93. Today. Day, I transferred 15000 from the money market over into checking to cover expenses. Um, one thing I do want you guys to touch on is the mowing ad to make sure that it's motioned and I can move forward with it. Um, well, I thought we did that last time. No. There was no motion made on it. Uh, I made the tweet that you found. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but just to review it and so I can move forward, we're already getting um, people asking asking for um, an RFP. Other goodies. Other goodies. So four town properties. Two yes. town properties. Okay. Per visit cost for mowing, trimming, hourly rate for additional work. Oh, and I do have a... I'll generate invoices. So this will be the contract. Um, that I'll tweak once, mm -hmm. once we have chosen. Once the board has chosen a, mm -hmm. a vendor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks good. Um, you change it so it says the town of Woodbury is seeking bids. Sure, no. whatever you want done to it. Um, you got. I mentioned tell me last time. Just draw it in. Could you? Okay. and I'll retype it. Is so we can get this on the ball. The ball on the roll. Roll on the ball. I'm gonna pass that on to her. Sure. And time frame. How do you want it? How long? Now that the dates have already gone by, that I stuck in there, so I'm going to have to tweak the oh. dates. So the dates say right um, now. March 21st. Okay. That their seal bids are due. <laughs> so. Um, so. I want to say, by April 21st, do <laughs> you want to move it up a month? or? Yeah. No, it's, it's got to be done. I mean, we should have somebody in line by middle middle of May so they can. Well, no, May is do the mowing. They need for, to be already locked in with yeah. the flags. They, yeah. they need to be presentable. Okay, so what would you recommend, Brandy? Oh, here I'm looking. I keep thinking the cemetery is included. Sorry, I would still. Oh, want you're it. right. I would still <laughs> you're want right. it. Yeah. 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 Um, what would you recommend? So if I put it in the paper, let's see. Um, 
How does Tom Yarder's work? When do you have to get it to him? We um, usually have it there on a Wednesday, and they can put it in on Friday. So we could do it this Friday and next Friday, and then the 25th you open them? So it'll be March 20, is that what you mean? So March? we can still keep it the same. So still keep it the same. Okay. So bids could be due by the 21st, and the board can open them, review them, and then make a decision on the 25th. Everybody's fine with that? Mm -hmm. Sure. That way it's only two weeks and we're not overspending mm -hmm. on that. The 21st of March, is that yeah, like you really won't, soon? You won't have it in paper for two weeks if you're going to do it for a Wednesday to a Friday, and you're doing your 21st. I'm just another day. You can have it on. <laughs> you can have it due on the Monday, the twenty fifth, whatever it is. Yeah, if we still have to do that Monday, that's fine. Yeah, then we're not. So they'll be due the March twenty fifth, and they'll yep. be opened on the twenty fifth. Voted. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the twenty fifth. So I'll make a motion that we approve the um, the uh, advertisement as amended. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. So here's the amended one. Aye. I'm going to use the rest of Thank you. Thank you. Do you want this contract back, Brandy? Uh, yeah. I just yeah. printed it out for Oh, do we need to? We're just looking at it. We don't need to sign anything. Correct. Yeah. So we have, I can put their information in, then you guys will sign it. Um, other goodies. Other goodies. Um, the LCT audit, I have to get on the ball and do that. Um, packing away the year, boxing it up, um, fiscal year 23. Um, I, don't think I, have um, I will be asking the board, and I don't know how I feel on it yet. Um, so being the delinquent tax collector, um, my attorney resigned doing tax sales. Um, so I have to find a new attorney. Um, the new attorneys are requesting the signature of the board. Um, um, immediately. Mm -hmm. Like as in to I take choose, them on? Yeah. Okay. Um, have you found one? I have found one that I'm interested in. Um, again, the detail I'm not fond of because um, I've researched two attorneys. Um, they're hourly paid. The, the money's coming out of the town. It's not coming out of the, the delinquent taxpayer. Uh, and I don't like that um, mm. at all. In the past, um, I didn't have to cut one check to um, my attorney. They would take their their, their percentage. Out of what they made at the auction. Fifteen to fifteen percent was Correct. it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and they mm -hmm. would hold the money. Now it's mm -hmm. a different ball game. I have to hold the money. Mm -hmm. I have to put it in es uh, um, escrow escrow account until the year's up, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. it's going to cost the town more money. Yeah. And, uh, we're not making out in the end. So whether I do for next year in the town report or in the warrant that either some things need to change, we increase our interest and penalty. Um, I tried making it a, not a statement, but getting caught up. So you're two years behind, no payment, no correspondence with me, it goes to tax sale. And I still have ones um, that are two years behind with no payment, um, no correspondence. And um, so, yeah, I am struggling because I don't want it to come out of the town's pocket. I don't think it's fair. Mm -hmm. um, would it be able to be reimbursed after the sale? Like it would come out of the town's pocket in no, the immediate time? No, because that's where the mm -hmm. town set the rate of 1% a month. Oh, okay. So I can't just cushion money that wasn't mm -hmm. in writing um, to the policy. Mm -hmm. I noticed no. that the Hardwick uh, town manager has found a new attorney. Did you check with him to see whether you might want to check and see who he's using? It's just that's that's the 
new thing, or not, I shouldn't say the new thing, it's, but they're all doing hourly, that hourly, and then I would hold the mm -hmm. money. Um, hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still struggling with that one because I wish I could find an attorney that doesn't put it on the town um, mm. because we're not going to make out in the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or just not. Is that a new law or something? That, that no, it's like covering that. the attorney's butt, what it is, and, and um, they're, they don't want to hold the money. Um, they don't want to have to keep track of it. Um, so I would have to babysit mm. and make sure, because it's going to make interest in the bank. Mm. Um, but yeah. But then the interest goes to the person who put up the money, right? It's not to the town, put it mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't, um, and I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair that um, you can go two years behind without paying and, and you're, well, they're costing the town money now because it doesn't pay for itself. Um, and there's no incentive to pay your taxes on time. So, so fortunately, I, most people don't see it that way. And they pay. The tax Again, sale money, money is that, that um, is that what, do the lawyers get paid from that? Rather they get 15% than get per out of what they're collecting. Okay. And then in this new situation, they would just charge the town an hourly rate, but. Hourly rate, but at the auction, they would still. So any research done, mm -hmm. any process, them coming in, it's, we would have to pay out of pocket $225 an hour. Mm -hmm. So then could we charge them for coffees? At ten cents a piece. <laughs> <laughs> I <like> coffee. No. <laughs> coffee. no that was ten dollars a piece. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good question. So can the town recover those expenses that it incurs in the Not unless we up the interest and penalty. No. That's the only way. But do people pay the interest of the penalty if they're not paying the tax? Oh yeah. Well, no. well when when the property is sold. When it goes to tax sale, okay. it does. Okay. I, but yeah, again, it's the town upfronting it, and I don't. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I loved my old attorney, and I'm really, really upset. Mm. They got done um, because it it just worked for the town. It wasn't on the town pe town's people. It was on that person. So I'm struggling with that one. But I still need to keep my policy and my my um, up to spec. Otherwise, it's just going to keep going on and on. Is a tax? I, I don't understand the whole tax sale thing, but the tax sale money basically the town has to hold it in escrow because there is the possibility that the it's a whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Money yeah. Money so you don't really have any money funds money. to pay the lawyer up front. That's why it's coming out of the town. You know, if, if you have to pay them an hourly rate. Correct. Right. It will be yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So that's okay, why I understand I, now. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. my old attorney never charged anything. Mm -hmm. It was just, and he held the money and kept track of it. Mm -hmm. um, he even tried to pay you the 8%. He <laughs> even did, and I had to give him money back. <laughs> I had to send the checks back. Um, Can I ask um, a quick question, uh -huh. just a clarifying question? So if if th that money is held in escrow, and if, and we pay lawyer's fees yep. for that, mm -hmm. and if that person whose property is up for tax sale pays within the year, then we're out the lawyer's fees. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Because they take it right out of the top. They mm -hmm. calculate theirs and all I'm putting in the bank is what the bid went for. But then if it if that person doesn't pay the back taxes. Yep. The bid and, gets and, it. and right, and it goes to tax sale. Mm -hmm. That money pays for the back taxes. But does immediately. not immediately, then, but does huh. not pay if there's any more, it does not pay for the, the lawyer's fees. Mm -hmm. Well they take it right out of the top. You, when so you when say it, take it right out of the sale. top, I don't know what so that means. I have means. a tax sale. Yeah. Once that, I have a tax sale. Say I bid seventy thousand. Yep. On a place. Immediately, the money would come. All checks for the bids would come to me. So you won the bid. You got seventy thousand. You put down on it. Immediately, that gets cashed. The attorney fees go out of it. Mm. And then the rest of the pot sits in the bank for a year, one whole year. Mm -hmm. Earning interest. So with this yeah. new attorney, you would wait until that auction before you paid them? No, they're mm -hmm. going to send me bills hourly. They're hourly. On a weekly, monthly so basis. Sending the notices, coming and doing research on every property. Yeah, and then their cap is 15%. So the 70000 you just mentioned in your example, the attorney's fees come right out of that yep. before the money sits for a year. Is there any way we could make it so the attorney's fees come out and 
an amount to reimburse the town for the money that they already spent on the hourly rate for the attorney comes That's out of that too. The interest and penalty. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. So Can you explain that again? Guy, I'm sorry. No, the new ahead. guy, new attorney, whoever, is going to get paid hourly. Yep. Up into that auction. Yep. Once that auction happens, he gets a, it Still. gets another fifteen percent on what we've already paid him to hold mm -hmm. the auction. And, yeah. Yeah. So they're really? getting more than they were getting before, correct? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. So my old attorney would, everything would be absorbed. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't charge to come do his research. He wouldn't charge to send the notices out. The new attorneys, yeah, that's what, how they're making their money. So the fifteen percent hourly. The fifteen percent would pay the attorney's fees. Right, and maybe if it went through auction, but right. the research and sending out notices is an hourly wage. No, but the way it was, the, the way, way it was, was, it would all come out of the fifteen percent. Yes, the fifteen percent he would think was covered. To do his time. He was just, yeah. yeah, that sounds like a very unusual lawyer. So, did, so uh, uh, the way it's being held, going to be held. No, the way no, it was. The way it was. Yeah. I remember. It was very convenient. I remember asking that there was an attorney, John Riley from Montpelier, that Marcia used to use for years, and I remember asking him, how, how do you make any money on this? And he told me, you know, every once in a while you get a really good one, where the 15% makes up for all the ones that right. weren't good. But, now it's only looking yeah. like they're going to get around three grand, and we're probably going to end up spending five to six hundred bucks um, to mm. have this auction. Right, that's only a... One visit to the town clerk's office is in one swoop, correct? Mm. And that's two twenty-five an hour. Randy, I've got a question. So, let's, let's say a property goes to tax sale. You take the seventy thousand, you put it in escrow. A year goes by. So, yep. so now you put seventy thousand dollars. The town immediately gets back taxes and no, nope, those are paid even before I stick it in the bank. Okay, I see. Okay. The town gets so that's the paid. So let's say we have. But then six sixty thousand left in the bank. So taxes are all paid. Why can't at the end of that one year period then the town take a portion out of that sixty that it has spent in legal fees? Is there the lawyer has authority to do that? Let's say the lawyer that you had been using, he had authority to take his fifteen percent out of that sixty. Wouldn't the town have that same right to, to recover its legal fees from that sixty? That, I don't think so. to me, it's like a sticky note, like, ooh, just take that money out for us. It's not in writing that, I mean, our, our interest and penalty is what it is. That's what the town voted on. Mm -hmm. If you want to make your money back, you've got to increase the interest and penalty. Or, or maybe have an article that says, in addition to legal fees to hold the tax sale. I would have to... Mm -hmm. um, as far as doing my policy... Still sitting on the money, though. From the, for from a the year, point. so we essentially have to front the so money they to the lawyer. Yeah, and yeah. then the whole cushion ends up going. But yeah, I would. I'm gonna have to do some research because I'm not happy with the money coming out of the town. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair, mm -hmm. but I also don't think they should just slide by when my policy is two years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and, it and like it's not fair to the rest of the town. Should be able to recover it. I wonder if that so would be a subject for I have, an article. <laughs> I think it's gonna either have to be. Again, on a town warning, or I don't know if it can just be on my policy. Would be I have my policy of my own um, for the delinquency, and that's where another thing is. I never had to go before the board to ask for their signature included. I, it was always my decision. I picked the attorney. Um, yeah, I had a, a friend in another town who told yeah. me that their board always had to approve all the sales that went for delinquent taxes, so I don't know. I guess it so could yeah, be I either way. Would VLCT have any guidance? Ooh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can, I, can I ask one more question? How would increasing the interest and penalty solve this problem? Uh, get more incentive to them to get them to pay. If you're looking at a 3% interest, um, let's say 3% uh, interest and penalty together combined. Um, are you going to want to, so for instance, again, using one that I used for pre-town meeting, their taxes are almost 14 grand a year. I don't get it until the year's up. 
Mm -hmm. There's nonsense in pay. Mm -hmm. They're obviously making more money on fourteen thousand in the bank than they are paying me on time. And and I likely one percent. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. There's been the yeah. other discussion of making the list public. Um, I thought it was public. The list of yeah. the You can come in the office, but not. We used to like, put it in the town report. We used to publish it. We like published it in the town report, report for years. I forgot. <laughs> 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 so yes, it can be put in the town report. It can be public. People put it in the newspaper. Yeah, but those people who, who aren't paying, who should be paying, aren't going to be the ones that are going to be embarrassed by seeing in the town report. Well, I don't know. There's one that's an attorney. <laughs> that, um, well, that one. Gosh. Yeah. Really. So I don't. <laughs> I think something's got to give here, and it's, it's mm. um, so I will see if I can tweak either bringing a new policy that I can change for delinquencies, including that, um, but this is all fresh still, and mm. I'm still, yeah, I don't like um, the town having to be charged. Mm. Yeah, and then we, yeah. once you know how much it's going to be, then we'll have to start budgeting for it, and yeah, it's too bad. It was a whole... I don't know if you two were even around when we had the whole big discussion about Marcia used to tell people that it had to be 8% because the, the penalty had to be 8% because that was what the state required, but it wasn't correct. You don't have to, but most towns up, are 8%. But and that's most of them are because the, because the town clerks are making, you know, the treasurer, delinquent tax collectors are lot. getting a lot of money out of it. Right. But the town's also getting their money instead of sitting yep. waiting on it. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on ninety-three thousand. That would be awful nice to have ninety-three thousand in our pocket mm. for this FEMA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do more research, Randy, Brandy, and um, let us know what you find. Yeah, I really didn't want to have to. Um, yeah, being um, elected and its own, its own. Um, yeah, I'm still struggling with that. So yeah, mm -hmm. I have to figure out some things and and look and see um, where other towns are going with what route. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But. Well, thanks for putting all the work into that. Doesn't mm -hmm. sound like fun. That's all I got. My second. That's yeah, enough. <laughs> yeah. Can I just oh. make a comment? This is a, some humor here that. <laughs> that I observed from the seat. Michael's comments at the end of that, could we just ask the VLCT, a lot of these conversations end with that. One of these days we'll smarten up and come to that right at the top. <laughs> usually, that's, that's usually the best line of... Yeah, well, yeah. It's free. It's free. It's free. They are very helpful. They, yeah, yeah, they're not help always them. helpful. Yeah. But I'll talk about that later. <laughs> But we do pay them a great deal of money. and We yeah. do. Yeah. They gave me that. Well, never mind. I'll talk about it when we get to personnel policy. Steve, you're up next. To the library? Yes. Okay. So the library, the library hopes to apply for uh, a grant through the U.S. Department of Treasury. I came to the board about a year ago. Mm-hmm. It was in March of last year when we found out about the grant. Um, and then we've been, throughout the year, considering at our meetings, the Library Board of Trustees meetings, we had three inspections over the course of the year once we found out what the, what the grant would cover. I guess should, I should start with that. The grant is intended to ensure that libraries can continue to provide for at least five, mm -hmm. five years um, access to internet, high-speed internet for education, work, and health monitoring. We do have high-speed internet. We have two computers over there. We have Wi-Fi. Um, and part of the conditions for the, the grant are that uh, you can fix the, the structure, the envelope of your building. So if you're, the building itself that houses the, the access to the internet is compromised, then the, um, that would be sort of a qualifying criteria mm -hmm. for the grant. So we had three inspections. Uh, the first one was in August, House Rights Solutions, came, walked around, 
And then we had Larry Eldred, former custodian mm -hmm. of these buildings and the director of facilities for the elementary school district. Now, it's now called Mountain View Elementary School District. Then we had Efficiency Vermont come. Mm -hmm. And uh, a common, common theme to these inspections was that the exterior of the building needs some work. And it, mm -hmm. it appears to everyone, myself included, it's normal wear and tear, that the people that build this, that mm -hmm. build this did a very mm -hmm. good job. And I'll tell you, that was indicated by the roof that was, that was re-shingled, I think it was three years ago. They re-shingled the roof and there was some concern, I remember we were talking to Michael about that when he was on the board, that what's the condition of the decking, the plywood on the roof? Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it was, it was good. an excellent Probably. condition. They were able to sh just tear off the shingles and re-shingle it. So, and I've had that, and I must say this, the pleasure of going up in the attic here over the summer. It's neat as a pin up there. There's, there's cellulose insulation. The cables, the electrical cables are stapled to the rafters up there. It's very neat. What, someone's been caring for this building, just like the 110-year-old school over there. People have been caring for these, these structures here. So, and it shows. So, what are the findings from these three inspections? The, um, the consensus is that there are exterior boards near the ground that are starting to rot. There's splashback from the... the, uh, the these are the, just trim boards, like clavers and stuff? Exactly, okay. yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got the east and north mm -hmm. sides here. They don't get the sun. They're, you, the, the worst boards are here on the north side, mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. um, some of that also has to do with the grading, just over the course of time, from leaves blowing and grass clippings and so forth, the, um, you know, the grade of the land mm -hmm. up against the building has, has risen. So anyway, the, the exterior boards around the bottom starting to rot in places. That's one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for that, um, the recommendation is to remove eight or ten inches mm -hmm. from around the, the whole exterior. And you, you'll see at some of these points we've got plywood. It's like pressure treated plywood. That's mm -hmm. held up well considering where it is there against the ground. But it's starting to warp um, and it's time to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So. So we need some work around the exterior bottom of the building. The overall around the building there's paint chipping. Not too bad, but we don't want it to get too bad. We want to preserve what's good there now. So painting and um, <clears throat> the other one would be to replace these two doors. Whoa. We could... It, if there were light out there, we could see this door is starting to rot down. I think they're good quality metal doors, but they've they served, it, served their time. They're oh. rusting, rusting, mm. yeah. Same. What's that? You can see, the rust. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to swing the camera around the door, we can, we can all see it. We'll take our word for it. That one's mm. rusting. This one is difficult to close. It's um, scraping against the... Okay. the uh, so what did you threshold. come up with for a towel? Doors. Oops, sorry. Okay, yeah. And the other one would be to... Um, one of the window sills needs to be replaced. Some trim boards at various places around. Not all the trim boards. And then another gable vent on the... Um, I think it's on the south end. And that's just to increase the mm -hmm. ventilation up in the attic to ensure that the decking boards mm -hmm. remain as sound as they are now. So, and there was one more recommendation, that would be to put in some French drains on the north side here, and the east side, just to help the drainage and carry it away. Um, mm -hmm. The total for all, and, and one other expense, the library board talked about this and approved it, was that, uh, to hire a clerk of the work, someone to manage this, and Larry Eldred said that he would. Uh, so the total cost of this job would have been 21500 However, recently I measured the distance from this building to the wetland. It's within 100 feet. Mm -hmm. And in my understanding, that would require some kind of permitting. Because that would be where we would have to do some of the excavation. So For a curtain drain? I think so. I think so. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, so I, I would like to say that we move conservatively and not get ourselves into a problem mm -hmm. of permitting near a wetland. Stay away from that wetland. Yeah. yeah. We, there's another grant coming up in the fall, specifically for small rural libraries. So if we find that we can get a permit for the drain, then maybe we could apply for that in the fall. But right now, I talked to Bob Martin, our zoning administrator, and I am certain after my conversation with him that we don't need any other permits, just to paint, mm -hmm. replace the doors, and some of the trim boards. So I think we're, we're all sound with the permitting. So that would bring the, the cost of the project up, including the clerk of the works, to 17000 So the application is due tomorrow. <laughs> so What's the I hope we can. What's the Zero. There's no matching okay. funds no required. Matching. Where do we sign? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just I just want to acknowledge here all the great work that uh, our library director, mm -hmm. Myrna Miranda mm -hmm. O'Neill, has done. Not only in assi assisting with this grant, but generally. So she's done an exemplary job and also our trustee, Alicia Rennie, she's mm -hmm. helped with this. And um, while I'm giving out thanks, I would also like to acknowledge Sarah Van Hoff, who served many years in a, in a variety of ways in the library board in town. She's done a great job, and she just retired from the board this, this mm -hmm. past year. So I just, I, I just want to acknowledge her, her great work for the town and the board. So where do you sign? Okay. copies here if one needs to be in the records. So we'll submit this tomorrow mm. and mm. I'll keep you posted. We hereby support yeah. Yeah. the Woodbury Community Library's application for a $17,000 grant through the U.S. Treasury Capital Projects Fund for Libraries. The grant will fund a project to address critical repairs and improvements to the building that houses the library and adjacent community room. The repairs and improvements will ensure that the Woodbury community will have a continued access to high-speed internet, directly enable work, education, and health monitoring at the library through at least December 31, 2031. The building is owned by the town of Woodbury. In this matter of property ownership, the Woodbury Select Board represents the town on behalf of the town. We hereby authorize Stephen Murphy, chair of the Woodbury Community Library Board of Trustees, to apply for the grant to make the repairs and improvements described in the application. Okay. We approve and sign this letter at a regular public meeting on March 11, 2024. You were ready. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> we've, been, we've had a year. We, we've had a year to do this, and we wait till the night before. How's that? You got to Deadlines are great. Oh, I should have. I should have had. We should have had a motion. But that yeah. was a motion that they said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. Aye. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. All right, thank you. You'll give us a, leave us a copy of that at some point? Yes, I will. Yeah. If you want the signed copy, I can make a copy at home. I no. have other blank copies. No, so keep the sign. We can just, yeah, give us a blank one. Yeah. We'll just put some initials on it and, okay. Right. okay. We can just initial that and we'll keep that for our copy. I don't know, I don't need another file on it why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Robin can have that one. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Sorry to make you wait, uh, Alfie, but since you have the okay. uh, executive session at the end. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So the sand screen. Yeah. Uh, last meeting we talked extensively about a contract needed for mm -hmm. the sand screen. Chris promised me he would write that up and get it to me. I have not seen it. Mm -hmm. Don't know where it is, if it was ever generated, if it was, uh, if it, if it, if it was I was good, you know, I didn't do this today. I got a late start because I had to shovel my driveway. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I can't figure, I got these 
sample contracts from VLCT, and they're not, they're contracts for services. They're not contracts for buying something. That's why I have a hard time um, figuring out how to make this into something that'll satisfy Brandy. Um, I have a question. Brandy, would you be able to create a contract? You know what needs to be in it. I want a purchase agreement. If I'm handing over a check for four grand and not getting anything until the end, I want something stating that we are going to get it in the end. I'm not just cutting a check for four grand to somebody that, I mean, this is very clear to me that why wouldn't this select board want this? But could you create that? You know what is needed. Well, we have, I have we a lot have of money. <laughs> we have a what? We have an invoice. Right, that we states, have a. That states uh, that you want to deposit. Right. So that's your paper trail. This isn't. This isn't. A, this is a, an actual company. It's not just somebody's backyard throwing well together. He's a legitimate company. And He's got this invoice made on his QuickBooks, and it says. Um, payment instructions, 50% deposit required. Invoice due date, February 15th. Well, that didn't happen. Invoice amount, 8500 And then he's got his other information about who he is and how he's legitimate and he's a... So, Diana, you said you, you talked to the LCT and they gave you sample contracts that are not... Uh, yeah, they, this, well, these are just... What I um there's a full blown and you don't have to even even the mowing one that we took that when Skip Lindsay was on the select board he designed many contracts and RFPs. Mm -hmm. Um so that's why the mowing one I just pull out because it was already created by a select person. Um so can we just you don't if you don't want a contract that? for for giving just cutting a check to I just know that when VLCT comes to do my audit and I don't have a contract in place. But can't that can't that invoice work, work as it's a, on a contract? Sure. That's um, on a contract. So we need to know what kind of contract it is. Well, what does it require? What's it, what's the contract? I mean, we have an invoice that spells out what he's going to do, what he's going to build for us. Mm -hmm. That it's requiring Any, a deposit. Yeah, if it's over six hundred dollars, I get audited on it for ten ninety nine. Uh, Alfie, when do you stating insurance? When do you need this? This has been going on for a year. Okay, but when or, been, or more? When do you need it? Back? Has, not more, but it's been going on for long enough. Yeah, it's going to come. It it's supposed to come out of this year's budget, for. which has is July one. Mm -hmm. So we have to spend this money, or should spend this money in mm -hmm. this budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's sort of my own okay. pressure. I mean, I'm almost done with the sand screen for the year. It's spring. I'm not, okay. you know, not using it. Other than, other than using the money out of the budget, that's my pressure. Also, and this all, guy, we've been lead, I've been talking to this guy mm -hmm. for, for a couple of months mm -hmm. yeah. about trying to get him to build mm -hmm. one that's a great deal cheaper. I've showed, I've showed estimates, give us quotes from estimates. other, yeah. other yeah. builders, and this is the cheapest one. Cheapest one. So can, I don't want to lose it. Can you send me, uh, if, if the board agrees, if you can send me the, the sample mowing contract that you suggested and I'll, I'll edit it sure. to sure. do that and then is that? Well, I just want to Go interject ahead. because, so from talking to you outside of the meeting, um, I was really under the understanding that we just need a purchase and sales agreement, not a contract for services. Right. And so, it, so there's two different contracts I showed Diana that okay. LCT has. There's a limit one. Um, so that it's tweaked. Yeah, the office is a mess because I'm not caught up with yeah, my stuff. So yeah. This is yeah, this is contract for limited services, but it so also, really I was supposed it. to do it. It does say if you have questions about this contract or about your liability exposure for contract services of any kind, please contact your passive loss control consultant. And I was going to do that today, and I didn't. But I think it could be fairly simple if he said, if you want us to have him sign something that says, I will do this. I think that's this. all it needs to be. It, 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 it's, it can be really simple. I'm happy to draft something. Okay, great. Thank you, Chris. Isn't that quote, doesn't that quote give you that? 
It, it's, it'll take me, Alfie, it's going to take me no time at all. I'll just do it and we'll get it done. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. It's not going to take it. Any you time. Want it's going to be simple. Case? Sure. For some wordage. <laughs> if you need any wordage. Okay. Yeah, Chris. Chris Cody is. Mm. And so then the, the engineering. Uh, I, I, I guess we need a contract for that. Well, well, I did. I just wanted to. I mean, I meant to put these things at the end of your report, but we did uh, talk, Chris, uh, a while ago about hiring Nate Seacard of Ruggles Engineering mm -hmm. to do the design work for the two bridges mm -hmm. up on Cabot Road, off Cabot Road, and um, he came back with with two. Uh, they were each about $7,600. They're separate projects. Um, I want to have Skip go over this because they will be FEMA projects. He said um, today that it probably won't. Um, he said field work will be completed this summer and I would plan for design work to be completed in the fall for permit approval and preparation for a late fall or winter bid. I guess... Um, I have to find out from Skip whether there are any timelines on the FEMA money. I think, didn't you say 2025? There was some kind of thing that the bridges wouldn't... Mm -hmm. the, the yeah, I don't remember. Oh, if that's, that's, that's true, then that's good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Meaning that it has to be done before 2025, or it just has to be under contract well, before 2025? Um, I don't, my memory is not exact, but I remember the year 2025. Um, I don't know if it was the Everything end of the year or... Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, for the mm -hmm. bridges that the town had a, a good stretch of time. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. so as he's, our he's saying he would have the, the design by the fall. Yeah, that's what he said today. Because I asked him, I asked him, one of these came through and said it was going to be a culvert, and I questioned that was that a typo? Or, and he said because the one that the first one, the twenty three was actually a culvert. I forgot about that. It was a, it was a culvert. That was a culvert, or mm -hmm. a bunch of culverts, or something like that. Yeah, so he said bigger. that would be depend. Um, he said, I use the term culvert since the existing structure that washed out had been a culvert. The new structure will need to meet current rules, so we would plan for it to be a bridge, or what we would, uh, all a, what we would call a three-sided box culvert. Final determination as the design progresses. So, yeah. Right, right, because you have to kind of follow up the state engineers right. uh, recommend. Right. So what, what do we have to do with that? I mean, he sounds like he's on board to, to get started with field work. Yeah, do you want to, um, I think I sent you all these. Yeah, yeah. you did. Do you want to agree to it and I can go through and fill in the blanks and the sure I mean I think we should mm -hmm. probably get get it rolling right yeah I think that's a good idea the one thing that I remember him saying was he was he's gonna want uh, bore bore testing mm -hmm. which is where they take a drill and drill down into the ground to see how far the bedrock is mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna be an expense to the town Separately, that FEMA will cover in the end, oh. but it's going to come out of our coffers right now. Oh, or whatever okay. we do, work. Yeah. if it's the summer when he's doing okay. his field work. Uh huh. And he needs that done before he comes up with the plan. Before he it. does the full engineering. Yes. Yeah. How about the hydrological study? I read somewhere this, the, the state was doing some of that for people. The hydraulic study is done by the state. Oh, they okay. Do all, they do all of them. Oh, okay. So okay. that's not an added cost. It's okay. Just, Waiting in line for them to get okay. To get so that has to be done before he can do his part too, huh? Correct. How do we get in line for that? Will he take care of that? Um, we did the application for the stream alteration permit. Right. We did sign that. Right. Uh, we should. That's for uh, who does it? Was he the culvert here? No. Okay. Hmm. Right. That was for for temper the temporary bridges. Okay. The one that you're oh no, we about. did the we did one no we that. did one recently for this, for these bridges. Oh, we really? did. A, I'm pretty sure we signed it all on it. 
Oh. Maybe it was. No, that I thought we did that one for long ago. I thought we did that. No, no I think oh, that, that one. one you're thinking of is for, for oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I thought it was his. Okay. Sam Green. Sam Green. Sam Green. So whether he does it or or one of us does it, we need to call the state and order that hydraulic study. So that was going to be my question for you two. One of you want to take charge of this? Michael, you're our road The bridges person. project? Yeah. Um, I can call VTRANS to get the hydraulic study done, but I, I don't yeah. really want to be in charge of the whole oh, thing. Oh, okay. So, right. Um, well, I mean, they're... I mean, I can call in the, the hydraulic study, then Nate's going to kind of take over. He's going to be oh. sort yeah. of doing all the rest of the permits and okay. getting us a design. Okay. And then it'll come time. He'll he usually, usually the engineers will also put it out for bid. Which is the first page of the that mm -hmm. Does all of that. Yeah, that's what I, I can be later on. I can call the experience to have the hydraulics. Okay. So it's, it's Highway 23 and Highway 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, if they do them both together, it might save them a lot of work because it's the same street. Same street. Right. Mm -hmm. So I actually don't remember, Dan, or, or did you guys take a look at these? Um, did he, in his services, does he apply for all, do all the permitting? He does. He does? Yes. Great. Yes. 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 Well, I think it's back here somewhere. He's done a lot of work for the town, and he's highly regarded by mm -hmm. U-Trans, and at least mm -hmm. District 7. I don't know who about District 6. So I'll make a motion that we approve both um, proposals by Nate Seacard. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So coordination of permits, prepare final plans, existing site plan, hydro, hydrologic analysis. He has that in for four hours, but nothing in total. So that means he, I guess somebody else does it. 24 hours for the plans, coordinating permits and our stream permit, four hours, prepare final plans, eight hours. For so that's the details that Great. he came up with. Great. So, we get going on that. So, how's the rest of your life going? The rest of my life? No, I mean your work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have another life? We don't life? have time for that. <laughs> Uh, well, we're shorthanded. Yeah. Uh, Timmy was out sick all last week. Oh, no. Except no. for Friday he worked. Mm. He worked a little bit Monday, and then he was out until Friday mm. uh, with the flu. Mm. Um, so I was out with the grader just about every day, mm -hmm. pushing snow back so mm -hmm. that we could get the water to run away. Mm -hmm. um, We've hauled a bunch of gravel. That process is starting. Pits are opening up. I was able to get gravel from uh, uh, McDonald in mm -hmm. Marshfield. Got some from gravel construction. So things are starting to move in our favor that way. This week I'm going to probably haul some more back to the garage mm -hmm. so that we have it on hand. Um, because the roads right now are very, and we can get into that a little bit mm -hmm. further, but the roads are very soft right now. Mm. And the more we put our trucks out there, sanding or plowing mm -hmm. an inch or two of snow, we're causing more damage than what we're fixing. Um, so I could have got into that with him, but he was not allowing me to speak. So, yeah. um, but that's why I'm trying to limit the amount the trucks are out because the roads are very soft. Mm -hmm. They are, they're, you know, we're causing more damage. Even the little one ton is sinking in. So mm -hmm. we got to be wise about that. Mm -hmm. So this week I'm going to try to just haul back to the shop so we have it on hand. And if we have frozen mornings, we can bring the gravel out to the really bad spots mm -hmm. and fix those. Um, so that's sort of my plan of attack for right now. Um, but these roads are changing. They're changing mm. so fast. I mean, like I said, it was it was two days of rain, and then it and then it turned to snow. 
and I had no idea we were getting 14 inches of snow. No idea. They said they said a dozen <clears throat> to two inches. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why I, when I we talked about this last time this happened, and it was a day, it was a holiday, like President's Day or something, and you said you didn't know how much snow we had up here. So that's why Saturday or Sunday morning when I woke up and we had that six inches of snow, I tried to send you a text. And yeah. you didn't get it until today because I didn't realize I couldn't send a text from home. From home. So, right, right. <laughs> sorry. Channel 44 yeah. was telling us we could get up to 18 inches out of this last storm we just got. Oh my goodness. Well, I don't listen to Channel 44. <laughs> I don't watch TV at all, so. Mm. Um, so where are you getting your weather information from? I get it from the phone. I get it from NOAA Weather on the, on no. the computer. Um, and and this, well, this morning is a perfect example. I left my house this morning at 5 o'clock. There was this much snow, uh, and half an inch of snow. Mm -hmm. I get up here to Woodbury, there was two inches of snow. Mm -hmm. So from that little distance, what is it, four miles to my mm -hmm. house? It's that, that much that. difference mm -hmm. in the snow amounts. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So... I don't live in Woodbury. Mm. I don't have. I can call you guys, and you can call me mm. every morning and say, "Yep, there's a half an inch of snow," or "No, nope, there's four inches of snow." Mm. But I live in Calus. Mm. There's a difference between mm. the, the two. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do on and Sunday morning. I, I can get up every single morning and come and just drive the roads, but you're going to pay me for that. I didn't want to yeah. call you on the early in the morning because I'm is that, is that it awful to have somebody text you like, it didn't pal, uh, because it didn't the text didn't get it I got it yeah okay for me to text you because I, I, I live oh. pretty high elevation so oh, I'm right. happy to shoot a text just to say hey this is this is roughly what we've got yeah, I mean, on the ground happy to do I'm, it I have constantly told people to contact me okay. I, I want I need okay. that information it's very helpful before we before the meeting's over let me get your I might have your contact information but if I don't yeah. let me just check mm -hmm. yeah and I'm happy it's, to do that. It's splattered all over. It's in the office. It's, it's everybody's got it. Okay. Robin can get you a. We'll get you a. Yeah. One of those. That will be updated okay. shortly Thank you. with um, Chris's information on it. And, so this is just our local for all our town officials. Oh, it's not a public thing. Okay. It's just for, you need to get a hold of somebody at home or something like that. That's okay. That's what yeah. those yeah, yeah, are yeah. for. So what about posting? You know, what they told me, it used to be that the quarry people didn't mind about uh, mud season posting because their road was so bad. When they were coming out on that flat road, they didn't, you know, they couldn't keep that open mm -hmm. either. But now, they're just ruining our road. So... I'll post them tomorrow morning. All I gotta do is call the state, the the secretary of transportation, and they mm -hmm. send me a letter. I post mm -hmm. it in two public places, mm -hmm. and I put the poster signs mm -hmm. up. It's that simple. Do you think it's it warranted just, at this point? Well, yes. Obviously. Yes, but it's yeah. Obviously. Yes. I mean, I, okay. I mean, but but my my problem is, you can't stop them. Mm -hmm. There's only a few trucks that you can stop. Mm -hmm. It's the guy, that, the logger. It's the gravel truck. It's you can't stop the gas, the fit, right. the, the right. propane, yeah. school buses. Right. All these vehicles, these service vehicles, are causing mm -hmm. as much damage or more. Right. So yeah, but they're we can exempt shut, because we can they're shut service. Our only interest mm -hmm. down in town. We can shut them down for four months. That's fine. Or three months. I don't think it's right. Mm -hmm. I think that 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 quarry brings a lot of money to this town, and I don't. I think we should work with them. Mm -hmm. So that's why one of the, another reason why I didn't go to mm -hmm. posting right away. They expect to be sh the roads to be posted eventually, though, right? Mm -hmm. The quarry does. Yes. I mean, that's got that's probably yeah. built that's into that's got to be built into their business plan, is that they, they yeah. every year. Okay, no, then I'll post it. I, look, I have no problem. I just I don't wear a badge, and you people are not going to go mm -hmm. and talk to that trucker that's out there running on the roads. Yeah. You're going to want me to. I think that no, but if we tell me very well. I think, could I just say something? I think that you're right. You're not going to be able to catch everybody. But like, and also, you're not going to be able to stop the fuel trucks and the, the buses. But there are some folks that probably, I know, that, and you know, like we don't bring concrete trucks in certain times a year. So that keeps that off the roads. Right. And so it is minimizing some of the damage to the roads. Right. And most people are very respectful of that. Yeah. You know, Agreed. They'll call and say, yeah. hey, can I, can, I, can I go? It's going to be froze. Can I, 
Totally. And so I have that relationship with a lot of a lot of contractors, truckers, and so that's what I was relying on. But obviously, that's not enough. Right. So would the quarry so. people ever call you on something like that? They used to. They did. They they, to, yeah. I talked to them. Yeah, I talked okay. to them and they asked me if I was going to pulse and I said mm -hmm. I'm going to try not to. Mm -hmm. But I respect, I want you to respect my roads. Mm -hmm. And they did. At 10, 10 or 11 o'clock I want you to stop mm -hmm. trucking. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know what this gentleman was saying about the truck, it what time of day hours. that was. It was hours stuck on the hill. Hours. So, and then when his okay, block, so here's a problem. I'm the guy that's going to fix that. How come I am just hearing about this truck being stuck for seven hours? I didn't say seven hours. I said hours. You said several hours. I said hours. Okay. It was hours. Okay. Well, at, at any rate, I'm just hearing about it now. Why couldn't I have heard about it when it was happening so I could have gone and had a conversation with them or helped them get out? Mm -hmm. So this morning over the radio, somebody radioed you, radio, radioed you and you didn't respond. So some. Meeting on Friday. Look over this one. There's a lot of questions here. I mean, it's really a complicated process. Oh my God. Then you'll come back and offer a recommendation. Right. The board will. Yeah. And we'll also con contract with. I mean, stay in contact with our town rep for um, the tax department mm -hmm. property valuation and review. Barb Schlesinger. She's very helpful one because I missed the deadline for the original application. I mean this original thing that we were supposed to send in by December 20th because of misunderstandings here and there. Uh, but it doesn't seem like we're going to get punished for that. So <laughs> because a lot of towns are in the same boat. A lot of towns. Right, right. Everybody's and, looking yeah, to get it done. And there's not a lot of contractors. I was surprised this one guy responded as soon as he did. Okay, so anything else to say on purchasing policy or reappraisal or office heating system? Okay, I'll make a motion that we go into an executive session then pursuant to 1 BSA 313A3 regarding appointment, employment, or evaluation of a public officer or employee. And you want to invite Alfie Inviting, and we're inviting Alfie to stay. Second that motion. <coughs> okay.